Hello, hello. Uh, welcome back. So this is session two of the proof of concept. So I am once again going over the daily higher time frame um, with the idea that we're going to close in the direction of the previous candle. Um, and the idea candles tend to create the wick right after opening um, and then trying to go down on lower time frames and find any opportunities to enter a trade. Um, so I talked about writing this all out, typing this all out to try to have something a little bit more concrete to follow as I go through. Um, understand it's like a living document. It's going to change as you go, as you test, um, as you, as I read the market, it's going to change. Um, so I have this concept that I'm testing. And so this is for consistency for me to, to stay uh, true to come to the charts daily, to marking up stuff, and to uh, for accountability. Um, I am actively uh, trading this concept um, as as I believe it to be true, um, and and this is just further like practice to help instill that faith and that confidence in going um, in in the process. So. Um, Today, we'll actually see a couple of uh, trades that were marked up um, that I was watching um, as they played out, uh, looking for my entry reasons, and the entry reasons played out, and I went for um, for that strategy for the particular targets that I was, was planning on for that one, stops and targets. Um, so just going over the few pairs that I have here. So we'll start with uh, odd USD. Um, as you can see, I was expecting the next candle to go up um, and it did. The question then being, you know, on this daily time frame, what was I expecting? So using the daily time frame, um, I was expecting uh, price. Let me come back to the daily time frame. So part of the proof of concepts that I have written down is to look for particular zones. Um, and these are possible zones to mark up um, because if you look at a chart, um, generally uh, you get in and around these areas for the wick creation. So when you start looking at, um, see if I can find it. So like this is a little bit beyond the 50% range as far as when it came down to create this wick. Uh, understand that, yes, it closed bearish, but generally what tends to happen is price will open, it'll come down, it'll find support someplace and then come up um, before before either changing its direction or, or however it decides to play out. Um, but very much like this candle here, it's about 50% of the range of the body. Um, and so looking at looking at different possible zones to mark up, um, is, is what I was looking at. Uh, so mostly I go for the 50% and I thought about adding the 382 and the 618 um, because the 618 is, is what uh, a lot of traders, they call it the golden ratio. Um, and then the 382 is the inverse of that. So um, both of those or all three of those could be possible areas to look at. So I had marked 50% of this candle right here once you mark 50% of the candle or, or the particular areas that you're going for that I'm going for, I drop down to the 30 minute time frame. I'm using the 30 minute time frame um, mostly because I want to see how price responds once it gets to these areas. Um, and then to be able to see how price responds and to possibly look for any sort of patterns. Um, I like having more candles within a zone to be able to give me a little bit more confidence, reaction time, things of that nature. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's uh, probably a way to, to do it just fine with um, uh, a little bit higher, maybe a daily one hour, you'd get 24 candles within um, the next the next play. A, a, a daily four hour, I don't, that only gives you six candles. Um, I'm not sure you can make much of that, but once again, that's not really not really what I'm doing. It's not really how I'm going to be testing this. So we'll see how that goes. Um, given the 30 minute time frame, the 50% retracement area of, of the previous candle, there was really nothing 
in this area. Um, and so I had to bring, bring it down quite a bit in comparison to where it was in the 50% range. Um, and so that's that zone right there on the 30. Um, price never made it down here. Um, in, in fact, uh, price never made it beyond breaking this uh, small support area here before continuing up. The idea being here is it, it's it's a good test because number one, it, it continues the idea that the next candle generally will follow the previous candle. And that has happened true. So we're, we're good here for that. So now it was just a matter of would I have found an entry uh, on the way in? And the answer is no. So there is no trade there. Um, going to GBP USD, um, I was looking for the next candle to go up and it did, it did very well. Um, marking the 50% retracement of the previous candle um, for the wick. And as you can see, it did not come uh, anywhere near that zone. Um, one of, like I said, I currently actively trade it. I trade it on the four hour or five minute um, using the nine o'clock candle. And that's what all this markup was here. Um, <clears throat> and so I never actually got an active trade in that one uh, as well using the four hour candle expecting the next candle to go up which given the wick the candle went up before it finally closed is it enough to have made targets to to have a successful trade yes if there was a valuable entry and there wasn't so gup usd didn't give me an entry and so not taking a trade is sometimes just as good as taking a trade that loses um uh, USD CAD, I was expecting candle to go down. Uh, the candle did go down. Um, looking down at a 30 minute time frame, um, was looking for about 50% once again retracement. Um, unfortunately, structure didn't give me anything really good. Um, it was a huge zone, but once again, that didn't really matter because price actually never came into that zone anyway. Um, same thing with uh, USD CAD as far as a four hour level, uh, looking for a possible um, uh, retracement out of that, uh, or not retracement, but a, a pullback before continuation, um, expecting this next candle to go down. And it did, long wick, even close bearish, but didn't give me an entry. So, you know, that happens. Um, CAD JPY um, was not on the list for the daily. Um, because of this candle right here. Oh no, no, it was on the list for the daily. This was where I was looking and this is where I needed the particular rules because I was combining these two candles and comp comparing them as one and imagining this as being the full body and this about 50%. Um, with that being said, um, if we mark that as the daily, just to make sure, because I also have a four hour section in there as well, dropping down to the 30 minute, we see that after this candle closed, it dipped down to create the wick before finally taking off. The question then being what are valuable or what are entry criteria? And so um, double bottoms, multiple wick rejections, head and shoulders, um, the, these, these first double bottom and head and shoulders are patterns. Um, the multiple wick rejection is more price action, um, reading the candle structure on how it goes. Um, so could you consider this multiple wick rejections? That, that is completely and totally up to you. It depends on, I mean, and for me, um, it didn't. So this, this was not anything I looked at. Um, however, like we can see that it, it did play out. So if perhaps you... Um, once it comes to the zone that you're particularly looking at, if you uh, draw a level where a candle ends and see how often it interacts with that level and you give yourself like a, a three wick minimum, um, then you could have had an entry here and taken it wherever your testing would have taken you. For me, um, on the other account, I was doing the four hour, um, four hour, five minute on my actual um, active trading. Um, after this four hour candle here, I was expecting the 
can next candle to go up. Um, marked out everything just like it did before, looking for a 50% retracement, um, a 382, and then 618 somewhere down here, but it never came that far. So looking at those zones right there, dropping down to the five minute, um, I got a ping into this area um, once it popped out and came back in and fit the rules for my double bottom. And so with that, um, actively trade or actively monitoring this one, I was not able to place a trade given um, the location that I was in. Um, I would just dropped on here the particular uh, position that would have been taken um, given my stops and my targets. And within a matter of 20 minutes or so, it was, it was hit. And so I was like, okay, cool. So that's great. That uh, once again, just builds that faith and confidence in what I'm testing. And then when the time comes to pull the trigger, I'm not pulling the trigger on that particular trade by itself, but a combination or a, a, a concept that I've tested that works over time. Um, so not every trade I know is going to win. And this is part of this whole testing process helps build that confidence in knowing that not every trade has to win. Um, so that is CAD JPY daily for Euro USD. Um, come in and see this guy here. So was expecting price next one to move on up. It sure did good. So, um, coming down to 30 minutes, the zones I was looking at once again, 50%, 50%, um, once you draw the 50% on the higher time frame, come down here and see what it lines up with as far as structure. Um, once again, I generally only focus on the previous candle, um, not necessarily all this other stuff to the left. I just want to know, um, based upon the previous candle, um, if it's an uptrend, this one closed bullish. I'm expecting if the next candle is to close bullish, that it's going to respect some of its previous levels that it's that it's uh, respected or that it's made before the day prior. Um, I am not expecting it to do it two days prior, um, given how everything goes. So only concerned about really what's what's generally in the very vicinity. Now, does it lead and give me a little bit more confidence um, that we could see a price bounce once it gets to this area um, and still hit targets without possibly closing in the direction I, I expect? Yes, but for proof of concept, we're going to stick with the day prior and go with that. Um, so no trade for EURUSD, but we do see that the previous candle did go in the same direction as the other one, or no. Today's candle did go in the previous in the direction of the previous candle. GUP AUD. Um, this one is the only one that uh, it, it started going, um, but then turned around and actually closed in the other direction. So so far we are um, out of six trades. This is the only trade that, uh, as of yet, did not close in the same direction as the previous candle. Um, once again, I'm not really trying to take into any consideration um, uh, data to the left, um, but if I wanted to fine tune, that could be a possibility. Uh, as it sits right now, just using the previous day's candle, as well as particular zones that I'm looking at, still has a high probability of being successful versus needing to nitpick and try to make a 100%, 80, 90% win rate um, by trying to find the very select few um, trades that are have a, have a huge probability of winning. There's no point in having two trades a month um, where you're only getting, uh, depending on what your, your risk reward is, you're not getting that much back for two trades a month versus um, having... 10 trades a month and you can have a minimal risk to reward and still be as, as successful, if not more successful. So looking down here on the 30 minute, um, when price did finally come up into this area, um, 
we have price open here, come down, come back up. Here's about the, the 30 minute or 50% retracement on the 30 minute, keeping in, keeping in line things like this and trying to capture as much as possible. Um, this is where, you know, if you were to do the, the, the three wick concept or anything like that, you know, the first wick is here. Um, the second one's here, it never came up the third one. So it'd be like, what would be your rules around that? Um, how do you stay consistent whenever it happens? So didn't really look at anything here. The four hour, once again, testing or tracking the four hour uh, trades um, was looking for the next candle to go up um, based upon this candle here. Uh, so it had about uh, 382, a uh, 50%, and we never came down here to 618. So going down to the five minutes, um, we have the four hour candle closing. Um, it comes down here and creates a bottom wick. Uh, very briefly comes down a second time after, and then rejecting with not rejection wicks. It's more of the way price responded. Price came down in here heavy, didn't break the level, and then rejected out heavy. Stops, targets, based all based upon the, the previous strategy, and, and price would have made it up through it, a little bit beyond it, to um, even with spread, that, that would have knocked me out uh, or would have tagged uh, TP. Uh, if not, it would have been a manual close because it is one that I actually I do monitor while I'm in that trade um, on the four or five minute. So that's that. GVP CAD. <clears throat> GVP CAD, we have another um, trade where we're expecting, I was expecting price to go lower. It did not. It actually closed um, bullish instead of bearish, uh, going down to the 30 minute. We have price that came back in here, did not respect the level that I drew. So this would, there would have been no valid trade there, um, for entry. GVJPY expecting the next candle to go up. The candle did go up. Um, this is also one of those because of the, the small body candle here was using the entire uh, candle prior um, as for the area. Uh, doesn't look the only area that made sense was all the way down here. Price never came to that direction, but we did see that it did rise out of that. The four hour level, um, I did the four hour, same thing here, candle, looked at 50%, looked for a five minute entry um, in that 50% zone, um, once price came up and closed, it never actually came back to create the wick and, and give any sort of, uh, there is no price action in here. There is no pattern, no head and shoulders, no double bottom, anything like that. So no entry there. So it would just been a watched zone. And then USD JPY. USDJPY was expecting the candle to go down. Uh, the candle did go down, drew up my zones on the, on the daily for about 50% retracement, went down to the 30 minute, was looking for structure here, um, and did not, this was the only structure that made sense in regards to, to breaking out, to coming back in. Um, this could have been a zone as well. That didn't really do anything. This also, could have been a zone as far as a breaking the low of the candle, um, but uh, I did not mark that up either. So the, the the zone that I was looking at, paid attention to, was this here, and it never came up. So what is the process for today? The process for today is very much the same. I'm going to clear the charts of everything that's been going on. Start fresh. Um, and mark up the same way as I would. Uh, hopefully, trading view is keeping up with me. 
let's unflag everything. So <clears throat> what do we got today? Well, today we got the same thing. This candle closed bullish. So I am expecting a 50% retracement as well as um, move up. And so there's the open. We got our retracement level in there and move on to the next one. Same thing, about a 50% retracement. I know I have the other zones in there, you know, the 382 and the 618, um, but we're gonna have to see how that plays out on the lower time frame. Expecting this one to go down. And this, oop, that one's ugly. If we take the entirety of the two candles, and then use this as the start. Um, and that's what we got there. Euro USD, 50%. GBP AUD. Oh, that's interesting. This is already well beyond it. So, this is where the 618 would also come into play, which is somewhere down there. Um, doesn't have to be precise because once again, when we get down on the lower time frame, all we're doing is finding structure in and around that area uh, to give us a zone to look at. Um, expecting this candle to go up with 50% retracement. I don't have anything in the proof of concept as far as what happens if price has already come to the level and left you. Um, like some of these that I am seeing, uh, it looks like the price has already come and touched these zones that I'm looking at. Um, but I don't really have a method yet uh, to test. So now we come down here to 30 minutes. And so when we look at this one, that's the previous day's data, but it looks and it lines up nicely with that 50% level. But unfortunately, we have all of this ugly wick area here. Um, so we have this huge zone here. And given that level right there, we, you know, we, I talked earlier about a three wick possibility. You have one wick come in, came out, there's a second wick. Um, further down, there's a third wick. And would that have been an entry? Maybe, possibly. Um, and then you just have to have your 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 stops and targets, depending on how you how you go about it. Um, some people might be more aggressive, and it's like, okay, if this is the wick, then this is what I expect. Um, for the other strategies, one to one point two five, that would have been hit. Um, for this one in particular, proof of concept, I'm going for one to three target. Um, one to three target gives you a little bit more leeway on having to be correct. Um, that one would have worked. Safer stop loss would be down here underneath this area here. That way if price does come back down here and play in this area, you would still be safe. Uh, you'd still be at 1.2. Um, so it's like, this is where the proof of concept, the testing, all comes into play. It's like, how do we make this work to be successful? Um, so that's already played out though. So it's not even something that I can actually say I was looking or watching. Um, if, if I had done this prior to going over yesterday's stuff, that is very, very possible because, um, well, no, because I just started right now because it's late. So if I had done this earlier, somewhere around five when the, candle, when the previous day's candle closed and marked up these zones, um, then I probably would have been watching this and alert would have been triggered and everything like that. But that is not the case. Um, so here we are here. We have the only zone that we really have here is right there. Um, widen that up a little bit. And we'll see if price comes down here and plays with that. Um, Gives an entry reason. See that tomorrow, actually, because that's what I got. Um, to that is about 50% there. Um, 
it looks like price may have respected this level here though before coming down but if not this is another area to look at cad jpy um we have today's data and i didn't mark off previous day's data but that should be this area here um, if not we can just use this as the 50 percent. but i believe um Fifteenth and the fourteenth, so yeah, that should count as that day. So that should be there, but this works just fine. So this would be the area that I would be looking at, and then coming in here, we have the zone there and the touches here. Looks like we're about in that area. So now it would be a matter of okay, well, what do we got? Do we have a double bottom pattern? Are we going to get a head and shoulders pattern? So do we get a double bottom pattern, or are we gonna get some sort of um, head and shoulders where it comes down, it might break and dip somewhere in here before coming back up and testing roughly the same area that was there. Um, who knows? So, so it's just a matter of a waiting game. We're at the zone, we're near the zone, and that's so that'd be something that, that I would be watching. And then, DUPAUD. DUPAUD. We have this zone was the 50% mark. Um, I'd have to move it up and line it up here. And we got nothing there. Uh, the next one was the 618, roughly. Um, we got a bunch of wick areas here. This one looks like it would count still as a day. Um, that's a huge wick area there. We'll leave that for this. This area will count. And nothing blew through. And so DVAUD, nothing, no entry, no anything, anything as of this, as of yet. Well, I would say as of yet, but it doesn't look like it's going to respond well to anything. Um, so GVPCAD, the only thing we really got is this area here. We got test, test test here. I could pull it up here as well, but this seems to be all the same move, so we'll leave that alone. So the only thing we got is possibly a double bottom. Once again, maybe a head and shoulders. We'll see how this all plays out. GVP, JPY, 50%. Wicks there, test there, move over, we're touching. So now it'd be a matter of, okay, do we get a double bottom, head and shoulders, any sort of price action that, that seems to dictate is gonna respect this level and then get an entry with the idea and the concept that the next candle should close bullish. USDJPY looks like the only thing we really have is this, what seems to be strong support or resistance level up here which was previously support very, very, very briefly. Um, but we do have rejection, rejection, rejection. So is it possible that given, once again, the concept, the next candle will close? It's very possible. Would there be an entry? Would there have been an entry with this? Not as of yet, not according to things I'm testing. There's no double bottom. There's no head and shoulders. There's no price action. Um, there's nothing there. So we'll see how that all plays out. So this is what I got of right now. Um, see how everything plays out tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be able to um, mark all this stuff up at five. That way can I, I can actually put some zones in long before we get there. Um, as we've seen in, uh, in, in a few of these places where we very much could have had uh, a viable entry trade and almost completion depending on what stops and targets you are actually going for um, or how aggressive or conservative you are. Um, and so this ends day two. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, concerns, uh, I feel free to leave them uh, down below and uh, I will see you again.